Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at something that I've gotten a lot of email about. Two different things, in fact. One of them is using the point and click move command to move the character, especially with the prop. And the other is to keyframe and why the keyframes sometimes don't work exactly like you think they should. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is this is a new look character that I have. And some of the characters have built in personas. By that, it means they have. Uh, built-in walk and run and they have built-in perform motions. If you don't like the particular set of motions that come with that, you can also come in and load a different persona. Now these movements were a little too feminine for me so I load the G3 Janna persona. Now we're going to right click, hit move, walk forward, and we're going to just click in this area. But you're going to see something happen that a lot of people are experiencing. I'm going to show you how to correct that. It's very simple. As you can see, she's gone right through the floor. Why does this happen? I get this email a lot. Not only has she gone through the floor, she's not really stopping where we want her to stop. Not even actually close. So how in the world do we fix this? What went wrong? It's actually very simple. First thing I'm going to do is remove the animation so that it doesn't interfere. Then I'm going to click on this prop. This large prop of this ship interior. The reason she went through the floor is she did exactly what iClone is programmed to do. To iClone, this is a prop, not the floor. The floor is the actual bottom of the 3D workspace. So she jumped down to the floor when she started walking, which put her through the prop floor. So what we have to do is right click on this prop and click Add to Terrain. Once this gets added to the terrain, it now knows that this is the floor, including the steps. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to climb those steps perfectly, but you can actually click over here and then she will climb the steps. But what we're going to do is walk right up to where we did before. So we're going to go up and walk forward, click somewhere in this area. She's probably going to walk a little past it. In fact, I hope she does because then I can show you how to correct that. Now, that's just good for what I wanted to show you. Because now I'm going to have to show you everything you have to do to correct this little problem. You grab the character and you pull it back. And that's it. That's all you have to do to correct that ending problem. So let's see what she does. She's no longer going through the floor because she knows where the floor is. She's going to walk up and stop right where we left her. Now, if you're making a big change, if you're making a huge change in the distance you move it, then you may have to do the walk over. But the way this stands, we're in pretty good shape right here. Now, I stopped and added another light here so we can see a little better what's going on. And all I'm going to do is, is move in. And what we want to happen is have her use uh, her arm to punch some of these buttons. Doesn't have to be many. We just want to simulate her actually using the console. To do that, we're going to use keyframes. In order to do that, we have to know what the timeline is. So we're going to hit show timeline. Also going to make sure that we have the object related track click. So whatever we're clicking on is what's actually in the timeline. Uh, Lakita is actually the character's name. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to start right here. Actually, we can look to where our motion is. And if we were up here previewing, we just come back to where our motion is. We can right click or we can left click on it to bring it back wherever we want to put this. And we can also move it once we have our motion in place. But let's go ahead and take a look at what's going to happen when we keyframe it, especially your first move. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the motion menu, edit motion layer. And what I want to do is first thing is I want to try and tell where she's going to be. I do not want her to move the full body though because that may twist the body. So we just want to move the body part. And I'm also going to use the, the move instead of rotate command to move her up. We just want to see how she's working. That was kind of stiff. So I'm moving it up and then over. Sometimes you have to play with it a little. If it comes, you don't want the stiff arm. You don't want it to look like it's stiff. Now we're going to have to rotate the hand just a little. If you rotate the hand, you also don't have to worry so much, depending on camera angle, about actually using a hand gesture like pushing a button, actually shaping the fingers or, or loading a gesture. You can just see it from the side like this. So what we have right now is we have her walking up here, 
stopping and then pressing a button, but that's not what's really going to happen. Let's take a look. What's happening is her arm is actually going to start climbing up. Get a little higher, a little higher, a little higher, till it gets right there. And that's not what I wanted. What I wanted to do was come up here, stop, then move the arm. But once again, iClone is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's actually doing what you told it or I told it to do. Here's the first keyframe. Here's the second keyframe. It is going to take care of the motion in between, or it's going to tween those frames. So it's actually, we told it to start right here with the hand in one position, and stop right here with the hand in the other position. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Now there's several ways to correct this, but if you don't understand exactly what I'm talking about here, we're just going to use a simple method to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight this first frame, and we're going to come up here and we're going to hit copy. Or you can, I think, right click and control C, or hit copy on right click. We're going to come right before this keyframe, and you can put it over here and move it. And we're going to paste it. Now you notice her arm jumped back down? Now the distance in here is going to be how fast she moves that arm up. So we've already corrected one problem. And this is another thing I get a lot of email about. The tween is not going to start until it gets between these two. Okay, now that was a bit quick. So all we have to do is speed it out. We're not even getting into curves yet. We're just going to speed it up a little, or slow it down a little, I'm sorry. That's way too much. So we're going to go back. The shorter the distance, the faster the move. Now that's not too bad. Without curves, that's not too bad at all, actually. So here we go. All right, we've got that motion down. I would also recommend saving right now. Anytime you're working in 3D, save quite often. Now we're just going to move down a little. You don't have to move down exact because you can move all this once it's put in. You can retime it. But here's what we want to do. We want to come in and we want it to press. And then we want it to pull back. So we're going to come here. We're going to go ahead and open up our motion menu again. And what we're going to do is either grab the elbow or grab the hand. I like to work with the hand. We're going to move her back. Now, let's say you wanted to move up here and press one of these. You don't immediately start that move, or she'll just go up. If you want her to actually come back you and stop there, then move over again with your timeline. Now make your move up. Now press the button. Move over again with the timeline. Pull it back. Move again with the timeline. Pull it down. Now, if we were to pull over right now, it would slide over at an angle. But I want to go down and over. So I'm going to move to another new area. Move over. I don't want it to move over and scrape into the panel. So I'm going to move over again. Then I'm going to push it forward where it makes contact. Then I'm going to move over again. I'm going to pull it back. Now let's say this is our last move. We really want to restore this hand to a natural position that works with the pose. A lot of people have trouble with this. It's very, very easy. Either come to this first keyframe that we pasted, or even come over here to this keyframe if you want to. But I would recommend this first keyframe. Right click, copy, move over, right click, paste, and her hand is right back down where it was. Now we're pretty much through with that moving list, we just wanted to improve it, and I'm sure it can use some improvement. But what we're going to do now is see what we have. She's walking on top, we got that problem solved. She's going to stop, and her movement should be defined, clearly defined. Once again, let's take a look at how that happened. Let's look at it. And now let's go keyframe to keyframe. Neutral position, or where it was. First move. Second move. See, up. Back. Do not make two moves at one time if you want distinct movements. You have to do it one at a time. 
Now, there's something else you can do in here that we're not really going to get into right now <clears throat> because it could be a whole thing in itself. But you can also use curves. You know, you could right click on this, and if you don't know what a curve is, then use every transitional curve that's in here until you understand it. But we could come out with an ease in and an ease out and slow this down a little bit. And it's not always necessarily what it looks like you need. I mean, it might not be just what it seems to be natural to pick. You may think that ease out of one and ease into another is going to do what you want. It could be just the opposite. So we're going to ease out of this one. Transition curve, ease in. Let's see what kind of difference it makes. Now, did you see that? How should the motion kind of went back a little more, stopped a little more, and then down? That's a bit abrupt, but it's not a bad motion. Okay, let's reverse it. Let's transition curve. I believe that was ease in. Now we're going to go ease out. Move back here again. Move it. And that was a little too quick. So I liked it the other way around. Or you can do them both. And you can come back and set it to linear, which is what the default setting is. There is also uh, the custom setting. Again, this is not something we're going to get into right here. But as you can see, it's more or it's less. You can ease in, ease out, more or less, by adjusting that curve. And this is why they're called curves. It's, it's a way of looking at it, like a wave file for an audio. So they're, we're really not going to use this right now. But I just wanted to show you that that's available. So as you can see here, we've solved two major problems, which is sloppy key framing and the character going through the floor. If your character is on a second floor, you really shouldn't have any problem if the model is, is built properly because it should know that that is a floor, even though it's a second floor. It's a solid object it should sit on. Let's take one more look at this. It didn't take us very long to do this part. Now, yes, it can be done smoother. You'll probably want to take as much time or more than we did to do this part to finish it up and make it smoother. But that's not bad. One thing we did not do, too, was have her look at the console. So for that matter, we can come along any time along here. And we could select her, select the actor, go to Avatar. And we'll have her look at, we'll pick target, have her look at the console. Now, the reason I did this is to show you it's not picking it. Why is it not picking it? Because we told it it was the terrain, not a prop. So if you want to now, you can go ahead and convert back to a prop. You may need to change some colors in here anyway. So you can go ahead and convert right back to a prop. That's not going to be a problem. Now you're going to be able to look at it. Now in this case, it didn't really make a big difference. Something else you may want to also do when you get to this point, and I'm not going to say it's going to make a lot of difference. This is personal preference. You may want to come in, hit animation, bring up your motion puppet. And depending on where you're going to be, depending on how smooth it's going to be, what you're going to do is probably want to add an idle action or something like that to it. But really, there's not going to be a whole lot we can add. But the first thing you want to do is use the mask. So we're going to mask out the legs and the torso to keep her from jumping. We do not want to override our animation, so we're going to mask that out too. The trouble is, that doesn't leave a whole lot for us to do. A whole lot to use, maybe a head movement. But it still adds a little more animation. Even the rocking of the arm. So as you can see here, it didn't take us very long to do that little bit of animation. You just need to remember to always add your prop to the terrain if you want the walk to work properly, the point and click walk. Remember you can change your personas. And remember to always use distinct motions. When you combine two motions on one keyframe, that is just one motion to that keyframe. So it will be a little muddy or it may just slide up. What we accomplished here by moving down a few seconds each time was to have distinctive hand movements where she comes in and out. And yes, once again, it can be done better. Actually, her finger actually goes through the panel there. But you can correct things like that later. You can go in with curves later. And you can make this look 100% better. I hope that helps.